Now, hey guys, welcome back to the channel, another Swiss 001 video. Now, welcome back to the flight simulator again. I mean, kind of as, as always. I mean, that's kind of what this YouTube channel is about. And today, we're actually here to experiment again with planes. Now, we've got a 737 right in front of us. This is actually owned by Thomas Cook, which has been dead for a year now, right? I mean, it's, been a, it's been a while, yeah. It's, it's interesting. And right now, I'm flying this plane with my joystick here, with this X-52 made by a Logitech, uh, probably one of the best joysticks I can recommend pretty much to anyone. This is obviously not sponsored, but I would really appreciate it if Logitech were to actually sponsor me. Uh, <clears throat> just saying. Uh, but no, this is really great. This is like a really nice middle ground that, you know, it's not an extremely cheap controller that has a cheap feel to it, while at the same time not being super expensive that it makes you depressed. You know, it's, you know, it's a nice middle ground there. I like that. Oh, it's not super extremely nice either, but that's a whole other story story today we're actually here to go for the full-on broke setup which uh, looks exactly like this let me just uh wait here i've just plucked off my joystick and what appears now is this cross here and we can click on that one with our mouse and um we are now mouse flying this plane and the yoke look very much stressed there yes we are now flying this plane without any yoke at all which is a simulator setup that depressingly enough is used very very much all around the world which uh, doesn't really make sense, especially with my setup here with the computer. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't mean to flex, but I'm running this on maximum settings right now. Yeah, most people who can afford a computer to actually play X-Plane can probably afford to buy a controller or something. But, you know, today is the actual challenge. What other ways are there to control a plane? Well, of course, again, there's mouse, which is what we're doing right now. Okay, let's just come in for a little bit of an emergency landing. We have limited control capabilities. Let's just see how well I can land this plane here with a mouse yoke because I have genuinely never done that before. Yes, I've always been the spoiled kid with a joystick. I started off with a really, really bad one though, but I've always had a joystick, which is the point, isn't it? Yeah, the real which ones actually use uh, a yoke, which is cool and all, but I'm not, I'm just not into it. Let's just go ahead and get this plane landed. Uh, it's actually, we're looking quite nice here, here on this approach. As you can see, well, probably here by the noise in the background, I'm using my keyboard keys to actually control the throttle input. F1 is to decrease and F2 is to increase the throttle amount, uh, which again works a bit. Oh, well, yeah. All right, let's come in for a landing. Let's maybe do this properly. This uh, feels very interesting to fly. Let me just say that. All right, come on. Yeah. All right, hard landing, as it says here on the screen, 378 feet per minute of a touchdown. And uh, we actually have a problem here now. I don't know how to activate reverse thrust, which could definitely be an issue on the smaller runways. But this worked out quite well. We stopped very quickly. So that's interestingly enough. Let's check out this landing here, though, in the replay mode. There we go. Coming in for that landing there and a touchdown, more or less smoothly. And a pretty quick stop. As we can see on this, sh you know, pretty long runway, we had no issues. Again, I don't know how to use the reverse thrust F3 or F5 or F4 without... Uh, there we go. I found the key to toggle with the reverse thrust. So you all know what that means. Of course, we're gonna fly this plane to shorter runways as well. Let's just go ahead. <laughs> uh, where should we go? Yeah, yeah, how about this island airport? Let's go ahead. All right, there we go. Welcome back to that German island that I was talking about some time ago. Actually, not too long ago. I think I did manage to actually land a Concorde here at this airport. Very, very interesting there. So let's go ahead and uh, try getting this 737 landed on this 1,000 meter long runway as well. Normally that shouldn't be that much of an issue, but you know, we're not using a joystick. Could generally be a challenge now. We are coming in quite nicely on this landing here. This is now a much shorter runway, so much more precision is needed, which I don't have. Uh, <laughs> All right. Okay, let's go ahead. Somewhat get this plane stopped. Which, uh, oh, that worked. That, that, that actually did work. All right, let's uh, check out this landing here. Well, we did touch down in grass in front of the actual runway. It was quite close. But we did stop, despite the fact that we didn't have any, well, <laughs> well, control input in a proper way, right? Uh, so this worked out very well there. No worries at all. Uh, well then, we could always try some shorter runways as well. Let's go to Jewish as well, which is a, a neighboring island here, also German. That won't only 
only has a 700 meter long runway, so let's just go ahead. Now, something that incredibly sucks about mouse control, especially if you're hand flying planes, is when you actually have to use cockpit knobs while flying, right? Because you always have to switch off and switch on the controls, which uh, sometimes can lead to a very, very dangerous scenario. Maybe a crash as well. Not particularly good there. Okay, let's go ahead. Coming in quite nicely on this landing. All right, a touchdown, and let's go ahead and put the reverse thrust on. And that did not work. That did not work at all. I think I forgot to apply brakes before touching down. Um, oh, that was a severe overrun and actually the worst landing in this video so far. Actually, I do have a little bit of a solution against all these problems. And that is actually using the keyboard rather than the mouse to control the plane, which, I mean, we can try. All right, so the thing is here in the flight simulator, we can actually not use keyboard to control flight here. But what we can set here with the keys is actually um, the trim. For example, we can put pitch trim up uh, on the numpad number five. And I guess that should work in some way. All right, all right, let's do a little bit of pre-flight check there. Plane is already started up and all that. Let's just see if the controls work. Well, uh, a little bit. If I press eight, then the nose goes down. If I press five, then the nose will go up. For this takeoff, we're of course, we're gonna have the nose a little higher. Let's go ahead and go for F2, which, which increases the throttle. Let's go ahead and put some flaps in here too, and just hope that this somehow works. All right, come on, we are rolling indeed. And let's just go ahead and get some trim in here. <laughs> Press the five key and hope that this plane will soon somewhat take off, which it does, it does take off. All right, we have flight, we have flight. And now the scary part begins where we're actually in mid air now, oh my goodness. Okay, let's try to get that nose of this airplane down, which is not particularly possible. And this is really the brokest of the brokest that you can go, you know, when you cannot even afford a mouse to play this one. And we are, we're not, this is not looking good. The trim definitely has very, very little effect on the flying of the plane. It literally does not have any power, which is a problem, and we're now definitely crashing. There we go. 737's in the water now. Yeah, maybe a mouse should be on your setup list, of course. I mean, we could see if a keyboard works in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, right? Uh, that's like their only option there. Oh yeah, there we go. Actually, here in Flight Simulator 2020, you can use your keyboard perfectly fine to fly a plane. So let's just do that then. All right, let's go somewhere with some plane. Yeah, I think the A320 will do just nicely. Let's discover the world a little bit. Let's go to um, Andoya in Norway. Let's go ahead. Yeah, welcome to Norway in Flight Simulator 2020. Let's just check the controls here. Oh, well, that works. It doesn't work particularly well at all, genuinely, but it does work. That's the point. Let's go ahead and take off. But how do we control throttle here? Whatever. Let's just go ahead and use our mouse there. Okay. But now we're only fully using the keyboard after I dis disengage the parking brake. Now keyboard. <laughs> okay. So this is how you control aileron. I have no idea how you can actually control rudder input. But uh, I mean, we're rolling. So that's good. Oh, uh, let's not roll off the runway. That's exactly what's happening. Ah, uh, that's not good. Let's go ahead and try taking off. All right. That's been uh, possible. Oh my goodness. This plane does not fly at all. Yeah, that hasn't particularly worked. And there's no way that you're going to be able to land this plane here. I think this is not possible at all. For some reason, if I press this button, the... Oh, that was a crash. Yeah, the spoiler has come out. Um, it's really impossible to fly a plane like this. It's really just gimmicky how they did it here. Yeah, no, just buy a joystick at 20 bucks, depending on the joystick. Just buy something, at least. So you don't have to mess around with the keyboard, which doesn't work. Mouse is okay, but keyboard, no. So, yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video. And I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night.